In this video, I'm gonna answer 10 frequently asked potato growing questions. Guten yarning, everybody. Well, if you've clicked on this video, then hopefully that means one of two things. First, you've come to the conclusion that we have, which is that growing potatoes in the garden is one of the most rewarding experiences out there. It's one of our favorite things to put into the ground and then of course to harvest or two, you want to know more about the process of growing potatoes because there are quite a few questions that do come up and we want to address some of those frequent questions. Now, this isn't going to hit all of the questions that you may have, I'm sure, because we're only going to address 10, but if you have other questions that we can answer, we would love to hear from you in the comments. But I also want to say that the answers that I'm going to give you for these questions are based on our own personal experience and what we've seen over the last few years of growing potatoes. Question number one, how many pounds of potatoes should I plant for my family? Well, I've read lots of different suggestions along this line. One website even suggested that for a family of four, you need about 40 potato plants. What I would say is to consider this. For a single plant, you should average about two pounds of potato production. In fact, for every pound of seed potatoes you plant, if you can get about 10 pounds of actual end product in produce, that's doing a really nice job. So if you take the fact that one serving of potatoes is about a half a pound, and you calculate the number of times you wanna eat that with your family, that should give you an idea of how much you should plant in the first place. And for those of you who have diabetes, there is something else that you should note. There are potato varieties, some of the fingerling potatoes, some of the red skin potatoes that are actually lower on the glycemic index. The other thing that you're gonna to have to keep in mind when it comes to the amount of potatoes that you wanna plant is what percentage of your garden space you wanna use for that planting. Question number two, what is a seed potato? Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about seed potatoes and true potato seeds over these next couple of questions because I think it's an important part of understanding how we grow potatoes. This is an example of a seed potato. This is a magic molly seed potato, one that has over sprouted. But I'm showing this to you because I want you to understand that when we get a seed potato, what we're doing is we're taking a potato that we are going to plant and allow it to produce asexually. Some people say vegetative production. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one parent, that's the seed potato, it doesn't require two different parent plants, that's why it's asexual reproduction. We put this in the ground or behind me you can see in the hay, and then we get the genetic clone of the parent plant. That means that we are guaranteed to get the same results, the same outcome as what we've planted. Now I mentioned that this is a seed potato from our previous harvest. So that leads to a question within this question, which is, can I just use my own potatoes harvested from a previous season to create seed potatoes for the next growing season? Well, we've actually planted quite a few of the potatoes from ones that we harvested last season. What I can tell you is that for most cases, the preferred method of planting is to get a certified seed potato. And the reason you do that is the process of certification is a pretty extensive one where the seed potatoes that you would say buy from a nursery or even buy online have to pass a pretty rigorous set of standards to ensure that they are certified disease free. And one of the things that can happen is if you take a seed potato from your harvest the previous season and it contains any kind of disease, any kind of problem, is that you could be reintroducing that into your soil and that could last for several years. So preferably for most people, you wanna use those certified seed potatoes that you can buy. In our case though, we've had pretty good luck and pretty good experience growing potatoes from our own seed potatoes that we've created. And this season hopefully will be another example of that. For those of you that like to grow your own potatoes and grow from your own harvested seed potatoes, we'd love to hear your experiences if you've had great success or if you've struggled growing from those potatoes. Question number three, if potatoes produce actual seeds, why don't we grow our potatoes from them? I'm willing to guess that some of you probably have never seen a potato berry before or didn't even realize that potato plants produce potato berries but I did a nice video where I talked about potato berries and the true potato seeds inside. I'm gonna put a link to that video so you can get a more in-depth understanding of how that process works. 
But what I can tell you is this, if you took the true potato seed that grows on these potato plants and then planted that, you're not going to get the same clone, the same asexually produced genetic clone that you would get if you plant from a seed potato. So it's highly possible that you'll get some different looking potato. You might even get a potato that doesn't grow as vigorously or you might have fantastic success. But in our opinion, it's not really worth the risk if you're looking at your main crop. Sure, it's absolutely enjoyable for experimentation, but again, you wanna make sure that you're getting good production. Some potato varieties, you're not gonna see any potato berries anyway. Also, some people like to pick the flowers off of the potato plant so you don't get that berry production and so that the energy can go back, supposedly, into the tuber production to produce bigger tubers. Now, that's not something that we do, but if you have experience with that and you've experienced better success, that's something we'd love to hear about as well. We also have considered that as another experiment for our potato growing. Question number four, are potatoes growing from the roots of my potato plants? Well, unlike sweet potatoes, tubers are not the roots of the potato plant. In fact, if I were to pull up these potatoes right now, what you would see is these lateral shoots sticking out that are called stolons. And those stolons expand and harden up and they become the storage organ, I guess is a good way to put it, for the tuber that's going to form, for that potato. One of the reasons why we did a video recently on the importance of hilling your potatoes is because the stolons typically, unless there's some kind of freak occurrence, aren't going to produce potatoes if you don't have them covered with the soil. So that's an important thing to remember about growing potatoes. They don't grow like sweet potatoes where the roots are digging down and the roots are expanding and becoming those sweet potatoes. You need to keep them hilled, you need to keep them covered as they're growing in order to encourage good tuber production. Question number five, what types of fertilizers are most important for my potatoes? Well one of the things that we always suggest you do is to do a soil test before planting anywhere because you always want to know what kinds of nutrients your soil might be deficient in or have excess of. Once you put additional fertilizer in, you can't get it back out easily except through time. Now for our potatoes, we typically add an all-purpose fertilizer, but our focus is always on the P and the K. We typically add fertilizers that are lower in nitrogen and higher in phosphorus and potassium. And the reason we do that is because if you add a lot of nitrogen, what you're gonna get is plenty of green growth at the top, but not really that focus down below. And so what we typically add are our bone meal, which is high in phosphorus, and our langbionite, which is very high in potassium. So the bone meal works well with our root crops and with our vegetables that grow below the surface. And our langbionite is great for the overall health of the plant. And one other thing we like to add to our potatoes is a mycorrhizal to encourage the roots to be able to really take in nutrients. And that helps with the overall health of the plant. Question number six, how often should I fertilize my potatoes? From our experience, we found success fertilizing every three to four weeks during the growing season. Typically after planting, when we've done that initial fertilization, we don't fertilize again for about a month. That gives time for the roots to start to develop and for the sprouts to begin coming up. Once that sprouting has occurred, then we can go ahead and continue that process of adding our bone meal and langbionite again every three to four weeks. One thing to keep in mind though when it comes to fertilization, yes, keep an eye on the fertility of your soil. You don't want to over fertilize because that has the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish. But at the end of the growing cycle, and we typically don't water for the last two plus weeks of our potatoes right before we're going to harvest, you don't add any more fertilizer at that point. Most of the fertilizer that you would use would need watering in and since we're not watering for the last couple of weeks, that's not something that you need to do. Question number seven, how much should I water my potatoes? Now I just mentioned that we typically don't add additional fertilizer to our potatoes until about a month after we've planted them. Well, similarly, we don't typically water our potatoes until about three to four weeks after planting. If we overwater early on, then the seed potatoes are just going to rot in the ground because they're not gonna have time to develop roots. And so that's something we want to avoid. So an interesting thing about potatoes is that we don't really water that much at the very beginning, and we don't water for the last two weeks as we are waiting to dig those potatoes out of the ground. 
In between those time periods, we like to give about an inch to two inches of water every week. Now, a lot of areas get about that much rain on average per week, and so many times we can just allow our potatoes to grow without watering. But we've also had some pretty dry summers lately, and so if that's the case, we like to get out there and again, give them some consistent watering. But another thing to know about potatoes is they do not like to sit in an area that pools water. Similarly to the beginning of the process where we're not watering and causing them to rot out, if you have a pooling area of water, the same thing can happen. You'd have potato rot, you could have all kinds of problems growing your potatoes. So you still want to have a nice, well-draining soil or at least a well-draining area that you can grow them in. And the reason we stopped watering for the last two weeks is because at that point, and this is gonna lead into our next answer to a question, our plants have pretty much died, so it doesn't make any sense to add additional water to a plant that's not developing any further. Question number eight, why are my plants turning yellow and dying? Well, it's actually part of the natural process of the potato plant. They're gonna look really beautiful and green and probably flower for some time, but then toward the end of the life cycle, they will yellow and then they will die. That typically happens for about the last month of the plant and that's a great indicator that they're reaching that age of maturity and are about ready to be harvested. Now you can harvest your potatoes while the plants are still green if you want some early potatoes. Those typically are a little bit smaller but we like to let the plants die the entire way back and even dry out because that gives a couple of extra weeks for the potatoes to sit in the ground and for their skin to harden up. Now we know of folks who like to, as the plant starts to die, cut the greens off and then leave them in the ground that way for a couple of weeks. It's just not something that we've done. So if that's something you do, we'd love to hear the reasoning behind that. If you do cut the greens back too early, then they're not going to have the ability to photosynthesis, which means there's not going to be as much production in terms of size of your tubers. Question number nine, how do I know when it's time to harvest my potatoes? Well, there are a couple of things that you can do to know when to harvest your potatoes. As I mentioned earlier, we like to let our potato plants die back and then wait a couple weeks till they're completely dead. And that's when we typically harvest ours. But there are a couple of other things you can do. For one, you can take a sample potato plant. Just take one of your plants, dig it up and see what the production on that plant looks like. And as long as you planted the same variety, you should be able to get an idea of where they are in that development stage. But the primary factor to consider in all of this is that there are days to maturity listed for each of the types of potatoes that you've planted. So if you have an early season potato, which is typically about 75 to 90 days to harvest, you can look at when you plant it and the day it is now and see if it should be about time to harvest. If you have a mid-season potato, then you're looking at somewhere between 95 to 115 days. And if you have a late season potato, you're looking at probably 120 plus days. So if you know the time to harvest, the days to maturity, then you can get an idea of when you should be harvesting it, even if some of the other indicators aren't necessarily there. Question number 10, how do I harvest my potatoes? Well, I guess that in part depends on the size of your crop. But for us, I can tell you the thing that I love to do more than just about anything else is to get in there by hand and to pull out our potatoes. I can't tell you how rewarding it is after three plus months of growing to see the end product appear out of the ground, to dig for that treasure. So I love to do it by hand. Somebody once commented on one of my videos, uh, I don't think that's how you harvest those. I think you have to dig them up with a pitchfork. Well, you can certainly do that if you'd like to. But for the size of our garden, I much prefer to get in there and pull them out by hand. Just remember, however you harvest them, be careful because even giving them a couple of weeks to allow the skin to thicken under the surface, they aren't going to be cured. And so that means that they'll still be susceptible to damage, to scraping the skin. So get in there, be careful, and get as many of these potatoes out of the ground as you can. Well, we hope you found this video informative today. We hope we answered some of the questions that you had. If you have further questions, leave us a comment. Let us know. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like. Leave us a comment. Remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are.
good to grow.